Senator Laval moved to discharge from the Committee on Rules, Assembly Bill Number 10259A, and substitute the identical Senate Bill 7925, 13 calendar 1877. Senator Martins moved to discharge from the Committee on Rules, Assembly Bill Number 10421, and substitute the identical Senate Bill 8037, third reading calendar 1878. Senator O'Mara moved to discharge from the Committee on Rules, Assembly Bill Number 8202A, and substitute the identical Senate Bill. 8045, third reading calendar, 1880. And Senator Prasad moved to discharge from Committee on Aging, Assembly Bill Number 9712A, and substitute the identical Senate Bill, 8098, third reading calendar, 1885. Substitutions are so ordered and directed. Senator DeFrancisco. Um, we must stand at ease until the jackets are prepared and the uh, supplemental calendar is, uh, is um, prepared. We estimate uh, from the hand signals from the uh, desk that it'd be approximately 10 minutes, uh, and we will start promptly as soon as they get here. Senator will stand temporarily at ease and remind all the members to remain close to the chamber. We should begin in about 10 minutes. Senate will be at ease. Senate will come Time. to order. Senator D. Francisco. I believe you have a uh, supplemental Senate calendar number 55A, and that's been uh, delivered to each of the uh, desks, correct? Supplemental, Senate supplemental calendar 55A is on the desks. And uh, the, that Senate calendar consists of the last Rules Committee uh, bills. Would you please uh, do the non controversial reading? Secretary will begin non-controversial reading of Senate Supplemental Calendar 55A. Calendar number 1853 by Member of the Assembly Field, Assembly Print 99D, an act authorizing. There's a home rule message present at the desk. The Secretary will read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo Fuente and Klein Stewart Cousins Young. Aye, 62. Bills passed. Calendar number 1854 by Senator Carlucci, Senate Print 1738, an act amended vehicle and traffic law. Last section. Section 4, this act should take effect on the 90th day. Call the roll. Adabo, Fuente, and Klein Stewart, Cousin Jung. Aye, 62. Bills passed. Calendar number 1861 by member of the Assembly Ortiz, Assembly Print 1097A, an act amended executive law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Fuente, and Klein Stewart, Cousins, Young. Ayes, 62. Bills passed. Calendar number 1862 by Senator Lanza, Senate Print 3322, an act amend the New York City Health and Hospitals Corporation Act. Last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Fuente, and Klein Stewart, Cousins, Young. Ayes, 62. 61, nays 1, Senator Perkins recorded in the negative. Bills passed. Calendar number 1863 by Senator Marcelino, Senate Print 5322C, an act amending the environmental conservation law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, Klein, Stewart, Cousins, Young. Ayes 62. Bills passed. 
Calendar number 1864 by Senator Lanza, Senate from 6692B, an act to amend the executive law. Last section. Section 5, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo Flynn and Klein Stewart Cousins Young, I-62. Bill's passed. Calendar number 1865 by Member of the Assembly Richardson, Assembly Print 9591A, an act to amend the economic development law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo Flannan and Klein Stewart Cousins Young, I-62. Bill's passed. Calendar number 1866 by Member of the Assembly Simonowitz, Assembly Print 9528A, an act to amend the education law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo Flan and Klein Stewart Cousins Young, ayes 62. Bills passed. Calendar number 1867 by Member of the Assembly Abate, Assembly Print 10369A. And Act Amend Chapter 504 of the Laws of 2009. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein Stewart, Cousin Jung, I-62. Bill's passed. Calendar number 1868 by Member of the Assembly, Crouch, Assembly Print 3160A, an act in relation to granting. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein Stewart, Cousin Jung, I-62. Bill's passed. Calendar number 1869 by Senator Rivera, Senator for 7450, an act amend the social services law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect on the 1st of July. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin Jung, I-62. Bill's passed. Calendar number 1870 by Member of the Assembly Mayor, Assembly Print 9932A, an act establishing. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin Jung, I-62. Bill's passed. Calendar number 1871 by Senator Golden. Sen Lay it aside temporarily. Calendar number 1872 by member of the Assembly Otis, Assembly Print 10100, an act amend the general municipal law. There's a home rule message at the desk. Secretary will read the last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin Jung, I-62. Bill's passed. Calendar number 1873 by Senator Gallivan, Senator from 7658, an act amend the criminal procedure law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousins, Jung, I-61, nays 1, Senator Hassel Thompson recorded the negative. Bill's passed. Calendar number 1874 by Senator Klein, Senator from 7799A, an act amend the public health law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin Jung, I-62. Bill's passed. Calendar number 1875 by Senator Ritchie, Senator from 7806, an act authorized. Last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin Jung, I-62. Bill's passed. Calendar number 1876 by Member of the Assembly, Harris, Assembly Print 10201. An act amend the elder law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect on the same date and same manner as Chapter 59, the laws of 2016. Secretary will call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin Jung, I-62. Bill's passed. Calendar number 1877 by Member of the Assembly Field, Assembly Print 10259A, an act amend the economic development law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect on the 90th day. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin Jung, I-62. Bill's passed. Calendar number 1878 by Member of Assembly Brennan, Assembly Print 10421, an act to repeal. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin Jung, I-62. Bill's passed. Calendar number 1879 by Senator Adabo, Senator Print 8043, an act amend Chapter 288 of the Laws of 2014. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, Klein, Stewart, Cousin Jung, I-62. Bill's passed. Calendar number 1880, by Member of the Assembly of Brindisi, Assembly Print 8202A, an act amend the Transportation Law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Really? Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, Klein, Stewart, Cousin Jung, I-62. Bill's passed. Calendar number 1881 yeah. by Senator Young, Senator Print 8055, an act amend the public service law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin Jung, I-62. Bill's passed. 
Calendar number 1882 by Senator Nazolio, Senate for an 8065. An act amend the Volunteer Firefighters Benefit Law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung. Senator Kaminsky to explain his vote. Uh, Senator Nazolio, Mr. President, I rise uh, to vote in support of this bill. Senator Nazolio, I know the fire services are going to miss your leadership on this and many other issues. I don't think we could say it here enough how much we rely, depend on, and need to thank our volunteer firefighters. Uh, every day we go to sleep at night knowing that they'll be there for us in the worst of times, and they make life and death decisions uh, that benefit us every single day. The science is clear about their exposure to cancer-causing chemicals. For what they do for us, the least we could do for them is recognize the dangers they face and treat them accordingly. This bill that expands presumptive cancer coverage is, a, is an excellent bill. I would urge the Assembly to take it up and commend the sponsor for not only this bill, but all of his work on behalf of our great volunteer firefighters. I vote in the affirmative. Senator Kaminsky to be recording the affirmative. Announce the results. Aye, 61, nays 1. Senator Kruger recorded the negative. Bill's passed. Calendar number 1883 by Senator Robach, Senator Print 8066. Enact them in the state. Lay it aside for the day. Calendar number 1884 by Senator Flanagan, Senate Print 8093, an act amending insurance law. Last section. Section 12, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flanagan, Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung. Ayes, 62. Bill's passed. Calendar number 1885 by Member of the Assembly Richardson, Assembly Print 9712A, an act amend the elder law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flanagan, Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung. Eyes 62. The bill's passed. That's bad. Calendar number 1886 by Senator Hannon, Senate Print 8107, an act amend the civil service Last law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung. Eyes 62. The bill's passed. Calendar number 1887 by Senator Hannon, Senate Print 8108, an act amend the public health law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung. Ayes 62. Bill's passed. Ooh, we got Hoyleman, too. In relation to calendar 1887, ayes 60, nays 2, Senators Hoyleman and Perkins recorded. Yeah. Also, Senator Squadron, ayes 59, nays 3. Bill's passed. Did I say Perkins? Yeah. Calendar number 1888 by Senator Young, Senate Print 8109, an act to establish. Last section. Section 5, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung, ayes 62. Bill's passed. Calendar number 1889 by Senator DeFrancisco, Senate Print 8114, an act amend the county law. Last section. Section 5, this act should take effect April 1, 2017. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung. Senator DeFrancisco to explain his vote. Uh, yes, uh, this is a very important bill, and I appreciate the unanimous uh, support of it. As everyone here probably knows, there was a lawsuit uh, brought by five counties and the uh, ACLU, uh, and in that lawsuit they were claiming that the state of New York's constitution requires the state to provide indigent legal defense counsel. Uh, the, the state has been providing it, but the counties have been paying for it, and there's been no uniform system throughout the state. That lawsuit, one of the counties was one of my counties, Onondaga. That lawsuit resulted in a settlement that the governor settled with the various parties to provide for the state takeover of the cost of indigent legal defense counsel. It works for several reasons. Number one, it's the constitutional requirement. Uh, number two, it's an incredibly important uh, removal of an unfunded mandate on the counties. Unfortunately, that lawsuit only provided for the five counties that were parties to the lawsuit. Uh, I had another county, Cayuga, that I represent, and all of you had other counties other than the five who weren't bound by that lawsuit. So this bill simply does this. It takes up the settlement that only applied to five counties and required it, requires it to be applied to the rest of the counties. Do the fiscal impact 
there is a phase in of the cost that the government, the state picks up uh, over uh, this, the period of this bill, and then uh, all individuals will be provided a legal, indigent legal uh, defense uh, during the arraignment portion of the uh, proceedings, and the counties will no longer have to pay for those expenses. So it's a great bill. I'm happy that all of you recognized it. There's the same as in the Assembly that will probably pass momentarily. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator DeFrancisco to be recorded in the affirmative. Senator Hassel Thompson to explain her vote. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I rise to congratulate Senator DeFrancisco on this bill and to let him know that certainly as the person who began um, the legislation that helped to create the Indigent Defense Fund and who um, walked through the, the Herald case that he just cited, and I am very pleased that there are other counties that are going to be involved in their ability to provide indigent defense because it has always been my belief as I stood on this floor as I stood on this floor and talked about uh, Gideon and how important that I felt it was that everyone who comes before the court should in fact be properly represented by uh, by attorneys and so Senator I'm complimenting you Senator DeFrancisco have some order in the house, please. I know I saw her. Yes. I'm sorry. That's okay. No, what I was saying was that it's a continuation of the work that we have been attempting to do to ensure that all of the uh, that all of the people of the state of New York have proper representation and that the cost of such representation is not borne by the counties themselves but by the state. And so I congratulate you and I support this bill. Senator Hansel Thompson to be recorded in the affirmative. Senator Panapinto to explain his vote. Yes, I'd, I'd also like to thank Senator DeFrancisco. This is an important bill. I mean, indigent defense is, you know, a, a big issue across the state. It's not a New York City issue. It's not an Onondaga County issue. It's not an Erie County issue. It's a state issue. And how we treat some of the most vulnerable in our society, you know, people who are accused of crimes who cannot afford a defense, is a great measurement. And I want to thank the senator. And as somebody who started off his career, doing indigent defense, it is very important that people across the state get good and fair representation. And this bill will do that, and it'll take the burden off of the counties and place it where it belongs. So I applaud you, Senator DeFrancisco. Senator Panapinto to be recorded in the affirmative. Senator Breslin to explain his vote. And, uh, I stand and I'll echo the remarks of Senator Panapinto and Senator Ruth Hassel Thompson and congratulating John DeFrancisco for doing a great job, and my fellow the assembly person from Albany, Pat Fahey, and the county of Albany for, for leading the charge to make sure that we treated defendants equally across the state. It wasn't dependent upon how much money a county had or philosophically should we give more money for representation or not. Now there will be an equality of representation, a consistency and representation, and it's placed where it should be, with the state of New York. And as Senator DeFrancisco said, not an unfunded mandate, but a mandate that's picked, paid by the state and gives consistent, fair representation for all defendants. I applaud the sponsors. It's, it's a great day for the citizens of New York. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Braslin to be recording the affirmative announce the result. Aye, 62. Bill's passed. Calendar number 1890 by Senator Young, Senator for an 8116, and act on the education law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo Flannan inclines to her cousin Young. I 62. The bill's passed. Calendar number 1891 by Senator Hannon, Senator for an 8117, act on the executive law. Last section. Section 2, this act should take effect on the 90th day. Call the roll. Adabo Flannan inclines to her cousin Young. Ayes, 62. Bill's passed. Calendar number 1892 by Senator Hannon, Senator for an 8129, enactment of the public health law. Last section. Section 8, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo Flannan and Klein Stewart Cousins Young. Ayes, 62. Bill's passed. Calendar number 1893 by Senator Carlucci, Senator for an 8131, enact relating to. 
Read the last section. Section 8, this act should take effect July 1, 2016. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung. I 60, nays 2, Senators Akshar and Lanza recorded in the negative. Bills passed. Calendar number 1894 by Senator Ort, Senate print 8137, an act to amend the insurance law. Last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, Klein, Stewart, Cousins, Young. Eyes 62. The bill's passed. Calendar number 1895 by Senator Amador, Senate print 8138, an act amend the education law. Last section. Section 3, this act should take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, Klein, Stewart, Cousins, Young. Senator Amador to explain his vote. Can I, have order? Can I have some order in the House, please? Thank you, Mr. President. I rise to explain my vote. These uh, series of, of bills that we're voting on, of uh, the heroin crisis that we have and we've been facing in the state of New York will go a long way. And this really puts New York at a much more solid footing and ground to lead and push forward in this crisis to finally help eradicate and to bring much relief to our residents in the state of New York. These series of bills will uh, increase and expand the insurance coverage for those suffering with addiction. They'll make treatment options more easily accessible in all areas of the state. And we're, we'll also be increasing more education and prevention uh, services and, and efforts from the classroom at a young age all the way to the physician, physician who is prescribing an opiate drug. There's no question that uh, we're making a strong investment in the wraparound services to help people stay in recovery. So, Mr. President, I support this. I hope that we all support this package of bills to really bring the relief of those who are struggling with addiction in the state of New York. I vote aye, Mr. President. Senator Amador to be recorded in the affirmative announced the results. Aye, 62. The bill is passed. Calendar number 1896 by Senator Murphy, Senate Print 8139, Act Amend the Public Health Law. Read the last section. Section 3, the statute take effect immediately. Call the roll. Adabo, Flannan, and Klein, Stewart, Cousin, Jung. Okay, Senator Murphy to explain his vote, but again. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise today to voice my support of this incredibly important legislation. After nearly two years traveling around this great state of New York as the co-chair of the New York State Task Force on Heroin and Opioid Abuse, we have seen firsthand the devastation that it has caused. Ladies and gentlemen, I think everybody in this chamber knows darn well that we have an epidemic on our hands. Along with my colleagues, I'd like to thank Senator George Amador, Rob Ort, and Senator Ashkar for traveling around the great state and listening firsthand to the horror story after horror story about the devastation that the heroin epidemic has been ravishing New York State, nonetheless the United States. It doesn't matter if you're a man, if you're a woman, if you're black, if you're white, what religion you have, it has shaken down very, very, very good families. It doesn't matter if you live in Brooklyn, in Queens, Rochester, Long Island, the Hudson Valley, anywhere. We all know what's going on, and we did it. We've been around here, this legislation, right here. I would like every single one of my colleagues to pick this up and read it, because this is what we're voting on today, some great stuff that we've learned, what we could do for the people of New York State, how we can help them. We know it's a four-prong approach, prevention, treatment, recovery, and yes, yes, the magic word, a little enforcement. The prevention piece, allowing medical doctors to have the education on pain control, on pain medication, allowing these people that are getting caught and used with Narcan, not once, but sometimes twice and three times in the same day, to have a 72-hour hold, to protect themselves, nonetheless the other people. The treatment, there's no pre-authorization anymore. 14 days, you're allowed in. 
We've dealt with the insurance companies. They're on board with us. Recovery, the wraparound services, this is where people, when we're allowed them to walk out the door, that we're there to hold our hands to them and make sure that they have a chance to recover. Any enforcement, if we've heard it once, we've heard it twice. We're not arresting ourselves out of this issue. We understand that. It's the major drug traffickers that we are going after, that we would like to go after, that use it as a business. Those are the ones that should have the stiffer penalties. Folks, it has been an honor and a privilege to be able to do something like this for the people of the state of New York. I, Mr. President, will be voting I, and I encourage all my colleagues to pick up a packet of our report. You'd be darn proud of what we all did and how we are going to help New York State. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Murphy to be recorded in the affirmative. Senator Savino to explain her vote. Thank, thank you, Mr. President. I want to thank uh, Senator Murphy for his advocacy and his passion and his knowledge on this. Senator Amadori, Senator Hannon, uh, the governor, and everyone who's been involved in this issue. Uh, many of us have watched the effects of this in our own community. I want to make particular mention of my colleague across the aisle on the other side of Staten Island, Senator Lanza. He joined with Assemblyman Cusick several years ago to begin to try and address the issue of over-prescribing of opioids. We are in a very interesting place right now. We're trying to figure out how to deal with the end result of opioid abuse and its concomitant connection to the heroin crisis. And we're making great progress, but let's not kid ourselves. This started out with people in pain. It did not start out with people looking to use drugs for recreational purposes. There are people who wind up hurt, injured, or develop chronic debilitating conditions. And unfortunately, our managed care system is driving people towards opioids far more than it drives people towards the treatment that will help them. So our work is not done here. We are taking tremendous steps, and I want to commend everyone for their efforts. But we need to examine the policies that say, if your doctor says you need physical therapy to deal with post-surgery, that those physical therapy co-pays are affordable so that you're not required to remain on drugs instead of going for physical therapy. Most of them are $50. Who can afford that? We need to work with our managed care plans to really create wellness plans, not just maintenance plans. Because at the end of the day, we can solve the opioid problem. We can develop all the addiction treatment problems, we, addiction treatment programs we want. These people are still going to be in pain. You cannot manage addiction. And in spite of all of this, there was no mention whatsoever of a program that we created here in New York State, medical marijuana. In states where medical marijuana has been in place, we have seen a corresponding reduction in opioid usage for chronic pain. The opioid abuse has, redu has been reduced, and heroin abuse has, re has been reduced as well. So we have done tremendous work here. Senator Murphy, you are to be commended. Senator Amadori, Senator Hannon, the governor. But our work is not done. People will still be in pain. They're going to need relief after they recover from addiction. And we have, to, we have an obligation to see to it that we provide them all of the avenues necessary to deal with sometimes a lifelong pain. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Savino, to record in the affirmative. Senator Bonasek to explain his vote. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first of all, let me congratulate uh, Senator Murphy, Senator Amador, uh, Senator Hannon. Uh, this task force started 2015. They went all over the state, and they continue to do it in 2016. This is not a matter of getting credit. This is a matter of addressing a heroin crisis in the United States, as well as New York. And what I have found in my district, when someone is addicted to heroin, besides maybe destroying their life, they destroy a family a family where that heroin addict lives with. And the other thing that hit me on this is that, uh, and I think Senator Savino touched on it, when you see a doctor, you break a leg. Uh, they follow you. You go to get therapy, you come back to the doctor. They trace your progress. But when an addict goes to see a doctor, 
and they let them, you know, they give them some medication, and they're done with them. They're done with them. And what we need is continuing help for that addict not to fall back on that addiction. So how do you solve that problem? There are drug counselors, and in our area, we have like the Mid-Hudson. If in Orange County, and by the way, it's number one in heroin addiction in the state of New York. To get, to go see a counselor, they gotta drive to Yonkers in Westchester County. Uh, and none of them go. And if you, and most of the peer-to-peer the -peer counseling is someone that was addicted. And now they know how to get them back or try to get them back. So I know we have to do more, but I think the next step is we gotta set up and it could be a retail store, these drug counseling services in every county to get that addict, which the medical profession doesn't take care of them once they let them go, to try to get them strong that they could stand on their two legs and lead a productive life. We are all in this together, and this is the number one crisis in America, and we have to do it together. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Bonasek to be recorded in the affirmative. Senator Montgomery to explain her vote. Yes, Mr. President, thank you. To explain my vote, uh, I want to compliment Senators Amador and uh, Murphy. Uh, and I, <clears throat> I compliment you today on doing the right thing. Uh, because, what, 30, 40 years ago, we did the absolute opposite to what you're doing today. And so what happened was we filled the prisons with people who were suffering for various aspects of drug addiction. So today, we are changing what we did wrong and correcting it, and your legislation helps us do that. And uh, I understand that Senator Savino says this is just the beginning, but it's a good beginning. So I'm very happy. Uh, and I'm especially happy that you have emphasized that the last thing on your list of treatment modalities, if you will, was criminalizing people who have what you now refer to, what we now refer to as a health-related problem as opposed to being, having an addiction. You're talking about treatment. You're talking about education. You're talking about prevention. You're talking about making sure that the health insurance companies respect the need for treatment for people. Um, you're talking about elimination of the barriers to treatment. These are the things that we needed to be talking about 30, 40 years ago, but we went to the prison system for the answer. You're going in the right direction. So Senator Murphy, I compliment you, Senator Amador. I compliment you. I compliment Senator Hannon. He's been working on this. And let's, for this particular era of our drug addiction problem, let's go down the right road so people can look for recovery as opposed to looking for a prison sentence, which doesn't help recovery or society and doesn't take us to where we want to be. So, Mr. President, I vote aye. Senator Montgomery to be recorded in the affirmative. Uh, the chair has exercised some latitude and flexibility, but I remind members that we are on explanation of votes. I will now recognize Senator Hannon. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I think it was 11 years ago that I first passed a piece of legislation that allowed for naloxone. And so, as we've expanded the access to that, made it uh, right uh, available at pharmacies without a prescription, we've just seen a tidal wave of the increase of this epidemic, the opioid heroin epidemic. And I want to congratulate the three heads of the task force this year, Senators Ort, Senator Amador, Senator Murphy, because they brought fresh eyes to the problem, fresh outrage to the problem, have caused greater change in the three bills that we have today, and also have marked the fact that, just as Senator Savino said, we have not finished this battle. 
we're going to be here again. But we're talking about it in a positive way. We're talking about it in a constructive way, not only the three bills today, but we also did some major things in the budget in, uh, in partnership with Governor Cuomo. We have increased the, the peer programs, the adolescent clubhouses, the recovery centers, there's new treatment beds, there's new slots for rehab. This is a major problem we have. I congratulate everybody in this chamber because you have dealt with your constituents' problems. You know how difficult it is, and you know how hard the road will be in the future. But at least we have made a major contribution to, our, that, to this problem today with these bills. Thank Senator you. Senator Hannon to be recorded in the affirmative. Senator Panapinto to explain his vote. Mr. President, I, I'm, I'm also going to uh, be supporting this bill, and I want to thank Senators Murphy and Amador. And, and I've had conversations with Senator Murphy about this. We have a health care crisis in this country, as Senator Savino said. We have, we've pushed people towards these opiates. We've denied them physical therapy. We've denied them chiropractic care. We've denied them non-narcotic pain creams. And, and we've allowed, you know, insurance carriers and, and our own workers' compensation board in this state guides people towards, you know, these heavy narcotics because they won't approve palliative care for people who have long-term injuries. So we've only begun to deal with this problem. We've got to work with our own state agencies to make sure that we're helping people get the pain relief they need and pushing them away from opiates. But that means doing sensible things. And we're going to take up those in our next session. But I want to compliment Senator Murphy and Senator Amador and Senator Ort. This is a step in the right direction, and I'll be voting aye. Senator Panapinto, the affirmative. Senator Ranzenhofer to explain his vote. Thank you, Mr. President. I also rise to explain my vote and to vote in the affirmative. And I'd also like to congratulate the three co-chairs um, of the task force, this task force this year, Senator Ort, Senator Amador, and Senator Murphy. And I'm particularly uh, grateful for Senator Ort, who attended a, um, a hearing that we had in, uh, in my district in uh, Amherst, New York, not too long ago. You know, when you sit there and you listen to the stories of the families and what they have gone through and how it really transcends can I have some order in the House, please? We have members trying to uh, explain votes. Uh, again, I see a number of conversations taking place in the chamber that I would ask, please take outside the chamber and let us give the respect and courtesy to the member that is speaking. Senator Ranzenhofer. Thank you. As I was saying, as it transcends entire communities from north to south, and again, you know, no matter what type of family you have, uh, you know, when you see uh, mothers and fathers that come to the hearings with photographs of their children who are great kids and all of a sudden, you know, were prescribed some sort of prescription medication. Uh, they become addicted and it tears them and their families apart. Uh, it's very, very sad. You know, I'd also be remiss um, if I didn't acknowledge uh, Senator Hannon, uh, who's been a leader in this area for many, many years as chair of the health, but also uh, Senator Boyle. Uh, some of us may forget that the first task force that we had several years ago was chaired by Senator Boyle. Uh, and at that time, it was a one-man show or a one-senator show. And he traveled throughout the state to really jumpstart. And the three chairs that we had now really built on the successes that he had. And I recall a hearing that I had three years ago in Batavia where we heard from you know, many of the same types of individuals, a different community, uh, but the problems were the same. Now, one of the things that I just wanted to comment on is when we have these uh, task force hearings and we have people there from prevention, we have medical providers, we also have law enforcement, one of the things that the folks from law enforcement say is that you can't arrest your way out of this problem, that you have to deal with the prevention and the rehabilitation and the education of both the people that are addicted and the families. But one thing that, um, and the only negative part of this, which I'm a little disappointed of, is there, there are still bad actors out there uh, that are poisoning our community. And the people that are in this for the business aspect, to make money and to harm people, uh, I still think that we need to address this. And again, I think this is step one. Uh, in the budget, we appropriated um, well over $100 million to deal with this program, uh, more than we had done previously and more than the governor had recommended. So, I think that everybody in this chamber gets it. 
Uh, we acknowledge that we have a problem. It's cutting across all of our communities. Uh, and I'm very, I'm very happy to support uh, these, these pieces of legislation and the great effort that was led this year by Senators Ort, Amador, and Murphy. So, gentlemen, thank you, and I'll be voting yes. Senator Rand's an offer to be recorded in the affirmative. Senator Latimer to explain his vote. Mr. President, uh, when I go home, hopefully we all get home today, uh, I get to pull into a driveway next to a hedge next to our next door neighbors, the McWilliams. The McWilliams family that lives next door to me, Jim McWilliams is a doctor, an orthopedic surgeon of great ability. Uh, Cassie McWilliams is a tremendous woman among many things. She is an Ironman triathlete. They have two lovely children, a boy and a girl. The boy, Hank, uh, moved in at 10 years old. I remember seeing Hank shoot hoops in his driveway, and uh, I saw him in full hockey gear when he played high school hockey for my hometown high school team. I also got to see Hank Williams in a brown coffin at Graham Funeral Home three months ago when he died of an opioid overdose. When I uh, go back home, and I see Jim McWilliams, we talk about the Yankees and the Mets, we talk about the weather, because there's something that we just can't talk about between us, because it's just too hard to talk about. When I go back and I see Jim the next time, probably tomorrow or the day after, I will remember Senator Murphy and Senator Amador, my colleagues in this room. Today we have done as much as government can do, we can do more, but we've gone as far as a bridge across a river that government can do. There are other things that need to be done that's beyond legislation, that's beyond our reach, even maybe our reach as human beings. But we can't bring Hank McWilliam back. We can just do everything we can think of to try to make sure that somebody else's neighbor's son doesn't have this happen to them. And that is what today is about. Senator Murphy, Senator Amador, and my friends, Today we've done what we can do to try to make sure that what happened to Hank doesn't happen again. With that, I sit down and have my vote recorded in the affirmative. Senator Latimer to be recorded in the affirmative. Senator Robach to explain his vote.